What's up, everybody? My name is Parker Ament. My name is Danny Ferrari. And we are Excellent Sound. Also known as the Bad Boys of EDM. Exactly, dude. Let's flip our collars, dude. Leather jackets. Oh, shit. You have one. I need one, dude. Cocaine. Maybe motorcycles. Knives. Knives. Cigarettes. Probation. Bad Boys of EDM. Back at it. Go ahead, bro. Sorry. I had so, to hit that. They need to start learning. No, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Important. Today, we are going to be going over everything drums with Skrillex, okay? Ooh, yes. The evolution of drums. We're going to be starting in 2014. We're mm-hmm. not going earlier than 2014. No. We're starting at 2014, and we're going to 2023. Ooh. Okay? We have a lot to talk about. I'm very excited about this, but there's something a little bit more important than this. Listen up. Shut up. Shut up and listen. Zoom in. Zoom in. Listen. You got five days until Gorilla comes out. You can still be on the early access and make sure that you get your copy. Now, go in the link in the description. You could press pause in the video, but come back, put your email in, bam, you're signed up. Guess what happens when you sign up, okay? What happens? You're going to get a link at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on yep. March 15th to be able to purchase Gorilla. And when you purchase Gorilla, you're going to get that early access copy. And what does that come with? 475 f- serum presets. Holy cow, dude. Yes. A free redacted sample pack, otherwise mm-hmm. known as Don't f- say it. Don't say Shut it Shut your either. god f- You already said it. You Shut just up. said it. Shut up. You just said it. Shut up and All listen. Right. And also, you're going to get six Project Fire remakes that we've been doing over the past couple weeks. Plus... A bonus, bonus. A bonus remix of Rumble by Parker and I. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Big deal. And we got a song coming out. Bam. I just told them right now. That's how you're going to drop it, dude. We got a song coming you're out. You're going to drop that shit on them. I'm in there. Get even closer, dude. 475 serum presets. And the contest, too. Forgot. Obviously, the ones that purchased Gorilla. You got to say the name of the contest, though. We don't have a name for it. Yeah, we do. What is it? Gorilla Giveaway, bro. The Gorilla the Giveaway. The GG's, dude. Okay, GG. GG's. Gorilla Giveaway contest. Mm-hmm. Purchase Gorilla, and you're on the early access. Automatically enters you in to be for to to possibly win the contest. Okay, you got to be on the early access, and you got to purchase Gorilla. <laughs> Subscribe, smash the like button, comment. This is not. I mean, I think we'll do a little bit of touch on the sound design of the drums, but it's not about the sound design. It's about how good his drum programming is yes. it's insane yes we're going to talk about the influences from where we think those came from the evolution of his drums we think this is a really important video for producers to sort of go in and sort of dissect and study his type of drum programming because his influences are crazy yeah and i don't know if you guys know but we go in so deep on these remakes mm-hmm. not just with skrillex but with other artists to really study like who they are as a, a person yeah as an engineer as a producer and like where they get all their sounds from that's how deep we go with these remakes and it helps yeah. so much man yeah. it just adds these tools to a toolbox like it's like you're collabing with them yeah since we have the internet now yeah. you know what i'm saying we're on reddit we're going through looking old interviews yeah in interviews like instagram stories like we go in deep so and figuring out how one sound was maybe made and then using that for the next sound that might be a completely different but the same sort of methods like there's a whole like i feel like we're like trying to solve like a murder case yeah dude we're investigators investigative journalists here audio investigators also known as the bad boys of EDM. So this is what we're going to be doing, you guys. We picked all of the pinnacle moments in Skrillex's drum career. I picked some of my favorites. I also picked some of the unique moments that are really important for all of us to know and to study. We all know that Skrillex comes from a rock metal background. Yeah. Okay. We're not going to really go into that, but you can definitely hear a lot of his earlier stuff and some of his more recent stuff. He has that rock influence. He's musical. So, his musicality. Very musical. I think he plays... He plays guitar, he plays fucking piano, he plays everything, Mm -hmm. you know? Plays with himself. Exactly. Who doesn't? It's natural. So the first thing I really wanted to talk about was 2014, man. So 2014 was a pretty insane year. I personally really was obsessed with Recess because there was a lot of hype behind it. The way that he released it was super weird. Like he released a video game and you had to beat the video game on the computer to listen to the album. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, it was pretty insane. It was a really dope video. Video game and he like did the music to it. I think like Summit was playing in the background the whole time oh, that's and like sick. different iterations of it. It was really dope. And then I remember Recess coming out and I was like, oh my god, this is like dubstep. This is my favorite kind of EDM. Right. Obviously, I like scary monsters and all of that, mm-hmm. but this is where he perfected the drums. Right. You know what I'm saying? Tons of really nice grooves in here. There it is. There it is. And then, dude, on the on the drops. Is that that? Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. You wouldn't notice that with the whole. 
yeah, it's buried by all the other sounds. Yeah. You know, these stems are really, really good to hear what's going on. They're not usable. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's good for studying. These percussions, that's what really hypes everything up. His build drums. And the trap. You know what? What's interesting about this is like, this is a song with Diplo. Yeah. So like, I wonder if Diplo had that big influence on it because Diplo is like super eclectic when it comes to music. Yeah. And you know, and this style drumming, obviously this translated, this is early Jack U. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. And especially with those types of rhythms that we're talking about. He was very worldly himself, mm -hmm. you know? He learned all of his stuff from Santa Gold. Did you know that? I don't know who Santa Gold is. Santa Gold is like a super awesome like songwriter and oh. producer. She produced M.I.A. Okay. Remember M.I.A.? Yeah, of course. And they that's where Diplo- yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's where Diplo learned it. And then, of course, the twerk shit. This is the hype shit, dude. Yeah. There was Dirty Vibe. There was, like, Doompy Poomp. The, all the weird shit. Yeah. There was some, like, really, like, pop, juke, Jersey Club shit on yeah. there. Really, really awesome. It gets you moving. That This style of, of no matter what, if you play that, it's going to make your you, it's gonna make you bounce. You know yeah, what I'm saying? exactly. Which is what I really appreciate about his drums. Yeah. Before we go on into the next year, a huge influence we all know is The Prodigy from Skrillex. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was one of his biggest influences. Yeah. And I could hear it on some of the songs, but going back in to do some research on this, I listened to this one song, bro. I had to show you. Yeah. I had to show you because I'm, I'm it's, so so, it's so insane how much Skrillex is in this song. Right, it's break dude? beat. Yeah, you got to mention the Amen break too when you talk about. I mean, any any sort of a lot of electronic artists. I mean, that's the huge. You know, that's a huge influence on most people. Is yeah, that definitely. Beat? The Amen break comes from James Brown sample way it's back crazy. in the day. It's the most used drum loop in the world. It's also the same drum beat that every beginner drummer plays at Guitar Center. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Miserable. But it's like slow. Yeah. Boom, boom, yeah. Bah, ba -doom, ba -doom, ba. So moving on into 2015, this is probably one of our favorite eras. Nice it's drum, the Jack U insane. era, okay? He started getting weird with it. Yeah, experimental. He, he started getting experimental. I think it had to do with like being with Diplo, being with all these yeah, other artists around. His friend group, as you would say. <laughs> exactly, his friend group. So I pulled in a couple songs. I wanted to just show you guys like how cool and brand new these snares were. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they weren't snares. He was. They were just crazy perks. You know and, what I'm and saying? And more influence in the worldly sort of ethnic sort of loops, especially with Jack U. I showed you that interview where he's actually talking about the Jack U snare. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's really, really interesting about yeah. how he was just like, what happens if I take out a snare and then I just try to make something that's completely fucked up and new? Yeah, dude. And, and sometimes you have to do that in your creativity. What a risk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just a perk. There it is. It's, it's like a nice flammy perk. So, so cool, man. And once this album came out, dude, guess what was all over the radio? Same shit. Yeah. Same shit Vocal everywhere. Chop. Vocal chops. Like, future bass pop. Yes, future bass pop. And this is what did it. Hamumba reggaeton. That bad bunny shit. Yeah, dude, that shit is so hard. I love... Oh, that's that 105 BPM. Oh, I miss 105. 105 dude. is so fun to make drums in. And then, of course, Take You There. This one was yeah. one of my favorites. Oh. Two things. Yeah. So... The timbale roll right before the drop, he uses that a ton in this record. Yeah. That's a, a reggae sort of fill with timbales, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not to mention, when we get to 2023, I, don't, I know we're going to talk about it later. I know, yeah, we're, but, we're excited. But when you get to 2023, you'll notice the evolution from this snare to what it became with like the 100 Gex and some of the songs on Quest for Fire. With that, I think, is so cool to see. This is the beginning of it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and if you think about it, this is the exaggeration of mm -hmm. the snare. This is like, I'm different. Let's, right. This is what I like. This is fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, imagine how many records he made up until 2015. He was probably yeah. bored of the same fucking snare over yeah. and over again. Definitely. And he was just trying something new. That was just huge, especially for the world, especially the Justin Bieber song. 
that mm-hmm. was that was wild. He's like learning different genres in his career, sort of thing. Especially with where you're going to next with 2017. You know, I think that he learned so much from Diplo. Yeah, you for know, sure. As far as production in a creative sense. Yeah. Not as far as like mixing and mastering and stuff like that, but yeah. more like thinking outside of the box. Yeah. Because, you know, Diplo is taking those shrooms. He's oh, taking yeah. The, he's taking some weird shit. A lot know? of hallucinogenics with a Diplo. A lot of them, dude. And it shows in his in his work. And you, you know, can tell really cool for... you're a beautiful man, Diplo. Beautiful man. Diplo, you are so fucking hot. This is about Skrillex, not about Diplo. Yeah, yeah. Rock we're not talking ads. about him. Thank God. <laughs> So after Jack U, what do you do when you're at the top of right. creativity? The whole world just copied you. Every song on the radio has a perk behind it, some yeah. melodic thing behind it. What do you do? He jumps into hip hop. You jump into hip hop. So 2017 comes around. He did the pop thing. He's at the top of his game. Where do you go? You go to hip hop, just like you were trap saying, shit, bro. You do some fucking trap shit. I picked Humble to kind of show because that was the that, one. That's his biggest song on Spotify. That's the biggest song right now yeah but he also did uh purple lamborghini right he did that vic mensa song mm-hmm. the one we like we like that vic mensa song this remix was pretty insane when we first heard it he's doing hip-hop fills he's doing really really aggressive sounding drums yeah this is just the drums that snare and the hats so yeah. the hats, the hats are incredible. Yeah. You know, especially for somebody coming from EDM, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To get really, really nice hip hop hats like that. Yeah. You and me, we try to not think about hats. Yeah. Because if you think about it too much, like the bounce goes away and it's right. like, it's, of course the snare. Of yeah. course the, the snare. The snare is incredible. This is another famous snare that everybody always wants. It's like, has like a simple, I mean, we've remade it before. Yeah. There's like a simple delay on the snare. Yeah. And it's, it's so. It's it's like kind of stereo. Yeah, it's really interesting. See, there's the normal one. Oh. Yeah. And then it goes back. And the kick, too. Notice how the kick is like snappy. Yeah. When we remade this kick back then, dude, that was our most used kick. Oh, in I love that Everything, kick. dude. Even this part right here, dude, when he's doing the double kick. Yeah. So drummers usually do it before, right? so it yeah. goes into the one. It's a little late. Like, yeah. it's not late, but it's a little late in the sense of where a drummer would normally do it, yeah. Exactly, but, you know, that's the rock shit coming out right. in hip-hop, dude. Super, super wild. 2017 was was really fun. And then next, we got 2018, and mm. we got, again, Witta with Joyride. There's tribal drums in there. Yep. There's hand drums. Mm-hmm. This is the first time that I heard quality bass house song that has a drum drop. So cool how this drop came about, too. Yeah, and I think that the friendship from them came from that purple Lamborghini conspiracy theory. So interesting thing about that is, like, Joyride was like, yeah, it's fine, because it was windows down. It was if windows, you to, straight up. Yeah, I was a big fan of that Rick song. Rick Ross. Yeah. Rick Ross and Joyride. the same guy. Yeah, of course Joyride's like, cool, whatever, dude, go for it. Yeah. And now he's best friends with him. So, you know, obviously, it's like that whole thing we talked about where, like, would you do this for free? It's yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not going to trip on it. They are homies. Yeah. They are homies, for sure. Let's listen to this drum drop. What is that? And the rhythm. So do you think that was Skrillex, or do you think that was Joyride? The sound sounds like Skrillex, but I'm not sure about the rhythm is so weird because he does this again in in the newer album. He does it in yeah. like this, right? Yeah, exactly. He's using a lot of other elements in there too, like the little oh, those yeah. Little, do you hear those, the mouth pop in there yeah, too? Yeah, all that stuff is in there, and it's adding percussion, like, but it's different type of percussion. It's not like your common percussion. Yeah. This is the one. That's Xena. Yeah. Those are Tim Ballers. Essentially, Xena is a Gen Widow with steroids. Yeah. yeah. On steroids. Again, what at 140. And he took away all the other sounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he used an excellent sample. Yes, he did. We will get to in this video and show you guys. That leads us into 2019. One of our favorite mm. years, dude. Great year. We were starved, okay? Mm-hmm. We were in the desert. Mm. No water. No water. No food. Dying. Just our legs stuck in a cliff. And then a couple of different things happened, okay, you guys? Dog blood. First yep. off, Skrillex and Boys Noise came out. He dropped an EP. Right. The which, show's track, show tracks? Show tracks. Show tracks. So Dog Blood was really interesting because he really encompassed the house parts. Yeah. And the kind of two-step garage vibe. And the drums were really interesting because they were very dead. Yes. They were very dead and kind of like dumb drums. Or you like to say... 
undercooked. And the groove is immaculate. Sounds like old prodigy. Yeah, dude. Listen, all the tur- turn all the lights. It's huge, man. It's uh, yeah. huge. But they're dead. Right. It's like somebody put their hand on all of the drums right. and they're playing the drums. Yeah. Sick. But also, too, he's also bringing back that sort of worldly vibe. You know what I mean? He's yeah. bringing in that sort of like hand drum stuff. He does that a ton. And this is kind of a pretty sick combo, Skrillex and Boys Noise. Boys Noise is more like techno, kind of like industrial-esque. He gets to bring out the weird. You yeah, know what I'm saying? For sure. You know, this didn't fit with his like Skrillex brand, so right. like he had to do the, the side project. Project. But anyways, let's talk about one of our favorite show tracks came out. He Ugh. screen recorded his project files yes. for two songs. and Blue balled everybody. Blue balled everybody. <laughs> but these are some of my favorite Skrillex drums Me of too. all time. There, I think what's cool about these songs is these are the, the meld of different influences into one sort yes. of song. You get Jersey, you get Trap, you get Dubstep, yeah. you get Future House. You get a little Moomba. You get a little Moomba. I just brought these guys in. I got the drum stems. Oh. This. Break beats. Even that fill. That's that's a rock fill, dude. Yeah, he it's, he does his fills like a real drummer. Yeah. It's crazy. And look, he does the ghost kick too. There's a little silent kick right there. Uh, oh, boom. Yeah, really, really sick. But let's listen to that snare. Uh. And for all you guys wanting that snare, that's not phasey and actual usable. <laughs> yeah, we got you. We got you. That's what we do here. All right. It's in our redacted pack if you are on the early access for Gorilla. Mm-hmm. The other one, dude, that I really, really love is his fills, dude. His fills. Yeah. Moon by Power Fill. Yeah. That wow. reminds me of the way you do fills. Like you do fill. That's why I like your fills a lot. When yeah, you do this that type is like this is like the punk Travis Barker fill. Yeah. He's the yes. There and it is. Here comes the jersey. And there's the jersey. So whenever I think of Skrillex, I think of show tracks. To be honest yeah. with you, I don't think of anything else anymore. I don't know why. I it's don't know why. It's the blend of everything he's ever done. That is his. That's the soul of Skrillex. I think. You in, know what's in there? Because he did it in his live stream too. As I think he starts with a really cool drum beat and then he builds off of that. Yeah. Another thing too is like his phrasing. Yeah. He's talking with his drums. Like if you notice this part right here, he doesn't put the hi hats on every yeah. loop. He only does it once. You know, and it's signaling that the next part is coming in. You know what I'm saying? So sick. So phrasing is another really cool thing that Skrillex does a lot. He's really known for it with his drops when he's doing like the call and response thing. Yeah. But everybody, like, we all know that. Right. Everybody knows that that's like the cool thing that he does. But with his drums, he does the phrasing, which is really, really nice. And it does make you feel lazy as a producer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like not putting in the fill. Yeah. Or, you know, not using the same fill over and over again. (laughs) Yeah. Like not signaling the next parts coming in. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's like, super subtle but it's it's really cool so sick also going from jersey into halftime drums is such an insane feeling which he does a lot yeah, with with fuji opener and i think with mumbai power even too just going from those super fast sort of drums into like a halftime breakdown just feels so heavy you know that's one thing Dude, i take away sure. from this too that was 2019 probably one of our favorite years of Skrillex drums. And then after that, there was pretty much silence, okay? Nothing. There was nothing last year. At the end of the year, yeah, too. at the end of the year. This is essentially 2023. Mm-hmm. I get a Spotify notification. Hey, you might like this song, 100 Gex. I'm like, fucking, I don't like that guy. <laughs> the guy with yeah. the cone on his head? Yeah. <laughs> Hyper pop. I like one of his songs. It's called like Hollywood. Dead I think they're or cool. Something. Yeah, but featuring Skrillex. I don't think that I've ever seen another song that is featuring Skrillex yeah. as a feature, which is really, really cool. Not a collab. Um, so immediately, you know, I'm, I got to click on it. Yeah. So I listened to it. I was blown away about the quality of the whole song. Oh, it sounds he, great. It sounds like a Skrillex hyper pop yes, song. Yes, exactly. <laughs> baseball bat. Yeah, but it's like a baseball bat and like you're hitting like a glass pillar yeah. 
of yeah, something. That you know won't what I'm break. saying? Yeah, that won't or ever break. Or it probably is just a glass. It's probably just a uh, fully glass. Yeah, he's thing. just like, tink, tink. Yeah, tink. little tinker. But I mean, dude, this just shows you how creative he is and how important it is to him to push the envelope. Yeah. You know? What can I do different this time? Yeah. Just the classic. Hurts? Yeah. And then that little juke part right there? Yeah. He's just teasing it. There's another one, There's dude. our wood snare, our wood block snare. Yeah, dude, that, that drop at the end is just yeah. bonkers, dude. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Now we get to the fun part, you guys. All right? 2023, Quest for Fire. My personal favorite song is Good Space. Oh, that snare. So this snare is just it's all over the album. Yeah. This is one of my favorite snares because it's simple. It cuts through, uh-huh. but it also makes a statement. It's you memorable. You know what I'm saying? It's memorable. Definitely. You know? Also, more rock fills. You know what I'm saying? This is the time where, look, he mastered his highs. Yeah. All of his high cymbals are really nice. His hi-hats. Yeah. His, his groove is just... Pitching the hi hats up and down. It's mimicking uh. what the drummer does on the hi hat, like this, like the accents. You know? Oh yeah, he's using a lot more accents in this album. Yeah, instead of doing straight sixteens, right? Like this, you're accenting one of them. So, so one of them feels... is louder than the others. Exactly. So it feels subdivided, but it's not subdivided. You still get the pulse of the sixteenth notes, and it creates groove. Yeah. He's using all of his influences from his previous yep. songs in this. Final Evolution, Pokemon Skrillex. Exactly. What's really cool about Xena is I think just like the way the drums are made. Even just this little snare right here. It sounds like a hip hop snare, but yeah. it's, it's more than that. The rhythmic stuff that's going on with the pitching of these drums. This right here. He made a yoink out of a drum. A remake is coming soon on this, guys. We have it. We've pretty much almost nailed it. So don't worry, you guys are going to be able to see that. This drum is actually called an udu. An udu. An udu, and essentially it's this ceramic pot. Now there's a there's an opening on the top, and then there's also an opening on the side. Yeah. So you can mute it and make these like raindroppy sounds. Yeah. But when you hit it on the side and everything's open, it sounds just like that. Yeah. This is how tight that is. There's, yeah. There's I mean, so it sounds tight. like the dude is wearing leather gloves yeah. on the fucking udu, like slamming it. You but know? it still has so much resonance in it, and I don't understand. And that's what's so cool about the yoink too is it causes that resonance, that pitch in the reverb. Yeah. Right? Which is so, so cool. So one thing we noticed right off the bat was this. That right there. Yep. And we heard that. We're like, oh, that's so sick. That reminds us of something. It sounds like an udu, right? But it's not. I think it's more timbales. This is actually an excellent sample. Now, let me just show you guys real quick. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Okay? You said it, dude. I said it. Let me just show you real quick and tell me that it's not. Now, I think he processed it. But if you go into Cartel Volume 2, so if you go into the fills, we have a couple of fills here, right? We got these hand drum fills, right? If you, t- if you take that drum fill right there, okay, and you drag it in right here, and then you're going to go ahead and warp it, and you're going to pitch, pitch it, it down. down. <laughs> now, I think he tweaked it a little bit. Like, if I line these up like this, and there's obviously a little bit more compression going on and stuff. I mean, you can hear the phasing. It's the same sample. It's the same length. Yeah. It's used all over this track. It's used as a fill at the very end Which during the so drop. Which is sick. Yeah, super, super so cool. So cool. That's the one we're pretty sure about. He just posted on his story, the one that was confirmed. Somebody sent us, which shout out to that guy. We'll post his name right here. Yep. But basically, Skrillex doing, it looked like he was doing a remix of the Missy Elliott sort of I think he was doing like edit. a live edit, yeah. And he's using an excellent clap from yeah. Cartel Volume 2. Which is two. fucking awesome. So that also confirms so my theory that this is an actual excellent sample because this is also from Cartel 2. Yeah. Pretty sick, right? Yeah, dude. So I think that's really cool. And just the use of just like he's really going worldly in this in this album too. There's a lot of other uh, songs that Parker's going to talk about. And I think what would be really cool is we're going to show kind of how to make one of those like sort of weird snares. I think oh, yeah. Really cool. Oh, yeah. Can I get a quick timeout? 
inhale, exhale. Right. So we're talking drill. We're talking UK. Everything. We're talking bass. Yep. Okay. And Xena had the UK vibe. Inhale, exhale. I tried to split these drums off, but I couldn't get the tone. I couldn't get the tone right. So here's the just the the drums. Mm. Bro, this is like classic hip hop. This this might actually take the the good space the snare for me. Sample selection. Everything. Look, listen how crisp so everything good. is. And then here's with the resonance on top of it. <laughs> yeah, that's the, yeah. There it is, dude. So this there there's a lot of ways he could have did this. It's probably a perk. Probably some Jack U shit on there. Inhale, exhale might have the snare. Yes. That takes the cake, dude. Snare's I love that fucking snare. Yeah. yeah. He has to be making these drums first. You would never make a drum beat like that no. underneath something. You know what I'm saying? And that's helping him get these sort of crazy ideas. I'm gonna play this drum beat for you, and I want you to tell me where you feel like the one is. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you when I hear it. Yeah, just count it. One, two, three, four. One. Good. Okay. But did I get it? Yes, you did get it. Great job. Great job. But the cool it's thing hard. about this is like it's kind of an illusion. Yeah. So he's putting the accents on. One, two, three. Right. One, two, three, four. Because you could you could be saying that that is the one. One, two, three, four, two, yeah. two, three, four, three, two, three, three, four, two, yeah, three. Yeah, definitely. You could be saying that. It's tricky. And it, it would work. But it's not that's not cool. That's no, not cool. It's not cool, bro. That's like American. That's yeah. like that's like white boy drumming. No, we're you not white boy drummers over here. No. And then when it comes in, the one feels like fresh and brand new. Yeah. So it's kind of like an audio illusion. It's like a fill when you start. So he starts it with a fill. So boom, ba -ba, boom, I, boom, I boom, love boom, doing ba -ba, that. Boom. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people in techno do that too. It is a fill, huh? Boom, ba -da -ba, boom, 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 yeah. ba -da -ba, boom, boom. Yeah. That, the, exactly. Yeah, that's really, that's really and interesting. In, in, that techno, that. in techno, a lot of people do it. So they start the song with an arpeggio, mm -hmm. okay? But the arpeggio starts on the third note. Oh, yeah. And then when the kick comes in, if it's like, whoa. Right. That's what the one is. Yeah. You know, you know, he's doing little tricks like that, which is really, really fun and it creates interest. Yeah, definitely. You know, you know I think he more. spends a lot of time and that's why it just it helps his song too. And I think it helps his writing too. Cause you know, you and me, whenever we're struggling with the drop, we're like, all right, we gotta get our drums right. Because if yeah. our drums are like we have a good drum beat, even if we change it later, it makes such a world of difference. And it feels better to, yeah. to be producing when when there's like a bed of sounds. Yeah. You know? Moving to the next one is tears. Or like Danny calls it, tears. Tears. This is the classic UK drill, bass, dubstep, old school shit. It's it's amazing. Okay, so there's like UK garage, yes, which is UK like garage. house, and UK drill is like dubstep. Or? So I'll cover it real quick. So hit me with it. Garage is kind of like two step. It's not house. So it's you like love two that step. word. Tell the people what two step means, because that's a drummer word. So two, two step, step makes me think of hardcore. Yeah, two step. That's what it is. It's do ga do ga do ga do ga do ga. That's the two step. So that's that's two oh, step. So that's what garage is. Bam, ba, dan, exactly. Bam, there it is, dude. Bam, ba, da, dan, yes. Bam, the Fall Out Boy dance bam, dance. That's two step. Dance dance. They better be playing that fucking video yeah. in there. So that's so that's garage. So garage is two step drums. Okay. Right. Pop vocals. Right. Weird bass. And weird leads. Okay. okay. So that's garage. Drill is the hi hats. Drill is hip hop. Okay. Oh, the double snare there. Xena has drill. Okay. Listen. Like, there's the hi hat. Oh. This Say whole, to the people. This whole album is essentially a UK based album. He said it. I said it full on sentence, and I'm gonna prove it to you. He has the influence of the grandfather UK dude, mm -hmm. and he's got the influence of the the UK guy that knows what's hot and what's popping right now. The Prince of UK, Prince of sure, U and Papa UK. I'll say Papa UK, Papa UK, and Prince UK. Yeah. All right, they're probably great guys, and they're yeah. probably friends for real. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They for probably, now. yeah, for now. <laughs> um, but look what came out. Look what came out. So A he's UK... furthering. You're furthering your conspiracy. Yes. Now I have some some 
evidence for you, okay? Oh. I have a song. I'm going to play it for you, and you tell me what this sounds like, all right? Talking about just the drums? Everything. Especially the drums, but everything. So that is Burial, okay? Now, okay. Burial is one of the hottest, like, UK producers that was making, like, dubstep. When it was actual dubstep, that's what influenced dubstep to today. Right. Was that. And that's a huge influence on Skrillex. Very cool. Was Burial. I could hear it, for sure. Okay? So now, I'm going to blow your mind again, Dan. Blow my mind. All right? Look at this next song that I got. Burial and Fortet. Burial and Fortet. Great group. One thing I could take away from this video, I think, is that, like, and you said it last time, you hit the nail on the head with, like, the friend group. Like, yeah. he's hanging around Noisia in the early days, so he's making, like, dubstep, yep. right? And then he goes off on his own during the recess days. I don't know who he was hanging out with, but maybe it was carried over from the Noisia days, yeah. right? Yep. And then he starts hanging out with Diplo. Yeah. You know what I mean? He starts hanging out with Zomboy. Yep. You know what I mean? And then he starts hanging out with these dudes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And Go find your friends that are like making the music that you want to make. Yeah. And if they're not in your hometown, you're in a small hotel, like go on the internet. Like there's tons of people out there that just like want to support each other with their music. You yeah. Go dude. to our Discord. You know what I mean? You can do a lot of stuff. Yeah, dude. It's super, super cool how this all like came about. All right, guys, we had a really good time showing you all of these techniques that Skrillex uses, especially through the years. If you guys really like this content, let us know. We'll make some more stuff like this. I, we had a great time. Some studious. St very studious. Historians, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you guys go on that early access list for Gorilla. If you guys like sounds like this, we have tons of them in oh, Gorilla. Yeah. You guys are gonna love those sounds. So make sure you get on that list. And March 15th at 12 p.m. PST. Pacific Standard, baby. The time. Put that in your calendar. Put some reminders so you can get that copy. That's right. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thank yeah, you. Thanks.